Now, our press review, Dipti Laurent, is joining us for a look through the front pages. Dipti, we're going to start, aren't we, uh, with the French president, Emmanuel Macron, in Lebanon. Second time in two weeks, isn't it? That's right. Well, he's the first, uh, he was the first foreign leader to visit Lebanon after those uh, deadly double explosions in early August. He's back today to, among other things, commemorate the 100 years uh, since the creation of the Republic of Lebanon, but also to meet with key leaders as, as uh, Lebanon announced the new prime minister yesterday. Macron uh, will, of course, be visiting the site of the double explosion in Beirut. But it's safe to say that his visit has been controversial from the get-go, some seeing his visit as a form of neo-colonialism, maybe France rushing to the rescue of Lebanon. And indeed, you sort of feel that subtly in uh, Laurent Lejour, the paper we're looking at here, the French language Lebanese paper wonders, is Lebanon once more on, quote, French time. Uh, the paper's also quite cynical about the appointment of the new Prime Minister Mustafa Adib, a Francophile, noting that the irony that it coincides with Macron's visit, hence uh, why the headline there reads that Mustafa Adib is in Macron's suitcases. Very nicely put. Let's move to France. It's la rentrée today, the return of Diptyque Laurent for a start, <laughs> but also um, back to school day for millions of students, isn't it? That's right. That's the big tradition, not me being back here today. Uh, la rentrée is a very big tradition here in France. It's a beginning of the new school year, but it's also the beginning, new beginnings uh, in general. And, you know, every year it makes big news, but this year in particular, because of the unusual context of schooling this year with the lockdown, uh, many students have haven't actually been physically back to school since early March. Uh, UP, that's how Aujourd'hui en France, or, or Le Parisien, as it's known in Paris, puts on its front page. Students are thrilled to be heading back to the classroom to see their teachers, to see their classmates, books and learning and all of that, uh, despite the strict rules that will be in place around mask wearing, social distancing, and um, um, uh, the disinfecting gel. I might add, though, I know uh, more than one friend who's a parent who will also be saying UP today to see their kids <laughs> finally getting out of the house so for the true. first time in six months. Yeah, a bit of a break <laughs> at least. Some international news. Uh, tensions between Australia and its biggest trade partner, China, continue to intensify. Yeah, it comes after the detention about a fortnight ago of uh, Cheng Lei, an Australian citizen who's a high-profile business anchor uh, on Chinese state television. Now, according to the South China Morning Post, Australian authorities have said they still don't know why she was detained. But it comes at a very particular context, a very um, very tense time. Uh, diplomatic relations between Australia and China are at a low. Um, Canberra has called for uh, earlier this year an internal in, uh, in international investigation into the source of the coronavirus pandemic, which sort of was seen as a, a, a hit on China. In, in retaliation, China bo uh, blocked key Australian imports. Now, the Communist Papers, uh, Communist Party's newspaper, The Global Times, today is accusing Australia of, quote, not having a correct understanding of China and of doing Donald Trump's bidding. After all, the writer warns, hurting ties with China will have consequences that Australia cannot afford to bear. It's Says. Nicely put in the cartoon. Finally from Dipti, a uh, new study. This is unveiling a rather queasy tradition. Dates right back to the uh, Bronze Age list. Yeah, well, you know, today, if we lose a loved one, we honour them through memorials and mm. pictures and photos and the likes. Well, uh, 4,000 years ago, people during the Bronze Age kept bones of their relatives. Really? And others okay. dear to them, like a tradesperson yeah. or a relative yeah. or ev even an enemy, they kept little keepsakes, which were okay. their, the physical <laughs> bones of the deceased person. <laughs> uh, researchers actually found bones from other people buried with bodies. Some were buried uh, under house floors. And in one example, a human thigh bone was crafted into a musical instrument. Oh, lovely. So next time you pick up a carved <laughs> instrument, you might want to think about from where or from whom it might be coming. <laughs> one of my daughters has still got her teeth, but they're her teeth, not okay. somebody else's well, teeth. That's less creepy, I guess. Yes, <laughs> thanks very much. Dictique Laurent on France 24. Good to have her back, of course, doing the paper review. More news coming up very shortly on France 24. Don't go away.